In this video, we will explain the color grade we did for our recent short film, Tokyo Solitude. I really have a good studio right now, so I figured I'd just record this out here in the middle of the road at 1am. It's much cooler anyways, cinematic as hell. So even though not everybody liked the film, even the people who hated it at least seemed to think that it looked good. So uh, I feel like we did at least something right. The color grade was done by my friend Dan aka 012 and uh, him and I have very similar styles so I felt like this collaboration would work quite well and um, I think I was correct because the film in my opinion looks awesome and again I didn't do the color grade so I can more objectively say that. We used Dehancer and DaVinci Resolve to edit this now, personally, I'm new to both these softwares, so I figured in this video, we're just going to give Dan a call and uh, ask him about his process and why he made some of the decisions that he did. And uh, hopefully, we'll learn something. I'm so cold that I can't talk properly anymore, so uh, I got to get back to the hotel and uh, give him a call. We are joined here today by 012, aka Dan, who, like I said, did the color grade. And to start with, could you just quickly run us through the basic process of how do you start the color grade, what do all the notes do, and uh, yeah, just generally how do you go about it? So to start with, we were shooting on a Sony and we were shooting in S-Log3. So the initial color space transform should take us out of S-Log3 and then into DaVinci Wide Gamut. DaVinci Wide Gamut basically gives you the largest possible working space to do your grade in. And then at the very end, in my case, my final CST takes me out of DaVinci Wide Gamut back into S-Log3 because I have my own conversion LUT that takes me from S-Log3 into Rec. 709 with my own grade. I actually made a few LUTs that kind of transform the image that really fits the way I shoot. Really good for like neon scenes and nighttime city scenes. I made this because I like to monitor my footage while I'm shooting and using this LUT gets me pretty close to how I envision the final grade. My first node I use to control exposure using the primary color wheels. I will use the offset to control the general exposure then I can pull down the midtones by dropping the gamma a little bit while boosting the highlights by upping the gain a little bit. The second node I use to control the color. This shot we kind of got it pretty close to how we wanted it in camera. We had some really nice cool ambient light with some really red backlight. I just wanted to warm up the shadows a little bit by adding a little bit of red into the lift while cooling off the highs with a little bit of blue into the gain. Next I have a saturation node where I set all of the channels to 1.5. On most shots this would be a little bit extreme and I'd want to dial it back using the key, but on this one I felt like it worked pretty well. On my next node I use curves mostly to deal with highlights, so I normally anchor somewhere around mid-grey which is kind of around skin tone and then I pull down the highs so we have a really nice roll off while adding a little bit of contrast into the shadows. On my final node I have Dehancer because I feel like the kind of effects it add works best after the grade. My second question is because I've never used Dehancer before myself is why did you want to use Dehancer for this one and not just the built-in grains and all the other effects that we already have on DaVinci Resolve. The built-in grain in DaVinci is actually really nice. I like it a lot, but then I was struggling to get nice halation with the DaVinci halation tool. And it's, you can see it's pretty subtle in the, it's like a, yeah, it's pretty subtle, but it, mm, I think it looks much nicer than the DaVinci one. And the grain, you have a little more control. So we shoot quite dark and so like 
I found that if you have a lot of shadow, shadow grain, it kind of loses all that contrast. So it's really nice how like you can make really granular effects. So we could like push the mids, bring down the highs a little bit and then drop the lows almost to nothing. Is there anything else than grain and halation on, on Dehancer? Bloom? Uh, I didn't use Bloom. I had a glow effect for some things. Uh, sometimes the, the film emulation is pretty nice, but for me, it tended, for shots like this at least, it tended to desaturate things a bit too much. And for like, for this final scene, it was a little bit too strong. All right, to quickly interject, ever since this interview took place, I checked my inbox and I found a message from Dehancer of them inviting me to try out the, the plugin. So that's what I've been doing for the past couple months. And I, I do gotta say that I, I'd always heard of Dehancer, never tried it before. I get it now. I understand the point. I like the character, the grain and the halations. The halations are really good. Um, and uh, I've been using them a lot, especially for like phone footage. I, uh, I like the, the character that it adds. So even though we genuinely we didn't plan this as a collaboration. I'm happy it worked out that way. Um, they gave me a promo code TIMU for 10% off if you want to use it yourself. And yeah, I think it is it is worth trying. Anyway, back to the interview. Uh, let's say that I, I'm new to WNG Resolve and I just want to do an edit without color space transforms. How important is, is that step? Basically, CSTs, you don't need to do it, but it will allow you to work in a better, in like a wider color space, which means your image, if you're doing kind of extreme edits, it's much less likely to break down. So you'll keep all the detail, you keep all the color. Did you want to break down this frame or? Okay, so for this one, we have the general grade with the LUT applied, and then we started off bringing the levels down but he was a bit too warm, so we cooled it out a bit, added some blues into the shadows. The bright side was a bit too hot, so I added a slight vignette around the edge, and then we wanted a little more light on his face, and so we could see the smoke a bit better. And yeah, then just a little more vignetting on that side, masking off, and that was that. Okay, I think my last question is, what is the, uh, what's your deal with grain? Why do you love it so much? I mean, the initial grades had a ridiculous amount of grain. So basically, what's your problem? I think it's good now, but I mean, come on. To answer that question seriously, I think we both have our own style, which is it works for us when we are doing our own stuff. But when it comes to a collaborative effort, I think sometimes, like if this was a Timu video, everything would just be kind of like this <laughs> and if this was like a dan solo effort everything would just be like this and it would be crazy yeah no one wants to see this <laughs> no well i do but so i think when we work together we both kind of regulate each other and keep each other on the right level yeah that's a great answer i i didn't uh think you were capable of such a great answer but i'm surprised once again sorry timu <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah i think i think that's all i don't think there's anything else i hope you guys found that valuable i've certainly myself learned a lot during this whole process of making this film and uh, even this interview and uh, if you're interested in lots or dehancer um, check the bio for for the links and um, yeah thanks for uh, for watching